Microsoft Word is one of the very popular tools used by many businesses worldwide. Word is required in a lot of jobs and companies are trying to evaluate candidates' Microsoft Word skills by asking Word questions as part of the interview process or presenting candidates with employment assessment tests. In this video, we will look at the latest top five questions asked during Word interview and assessment test to help you get ready for the challenge. As part of this video, we will look at the different ways how you can change text format, how you can work with 3D models in Microsoft Word, look at how you can embed PDF objects in Word, change margins for printing, and we will also focus on tracking changes in Microsoft Word, why you might consider doing this, and what are the most effective ways of doing it. So let's go ahead and get started. One of the questions that shows up in a lot of Word assessment tests is how do you change text's formatting and style? There are multiple different ways how you can change format of the text in Word. For example, this text was copied from the text file and I enabled the special characters that which you can enable or disable, show and hide. This is the button that you can use. So when they are disabled, this is how text look. And when you enable them, you see the end of the line and paragraph, spaces and tabs. Let's disable it for a second so we can see document better. There are multiple different ways you can change formatting in Word. For example, if you want to change the how fonts are appear, you can select the text. Word only works with the certain areas that you select. And then you have access to the font menu. You can change the font itself. So Calibri is a good business font that you can use. Uh, you can keep it. You can change to Arial. That's another one that I uh, used a lot in the businesses. And you can change the size of the font. And you can just change size up or down. So let me demonstrate this. So this increases the size of the font, this decreases the size of the font. Very similar capabilities are available if you just do right mouse click. When you did this, on the top there is a menu that shows uh, what you can do with text and same items are available. In addition to font and size changes, you can also do bold, italic, underline and change the color and add bullets. Let's look at some considerations of what uh, you can do with the text. Typically text come in and you have a uh, title, which might be called heading. Word provides some specific elements uh, to deal with that. For example, heading 1, heading 2, and there are a lot of different styles. The concept of style is that you select the text and you assign a style to the text, which will bring font and paragraph options, already predefined by Microsoft. For example, in this file, how do we all protect the environment? What can I do specifically might be the title of the entire file, entire Word document. So we can assign it heading 1. Uh, to this title. I just put the cursor into this line and you saw that this was just uh, the complete line and you can double check this by looking at the end of paragraph symbol and you can assign heading one style to this. And if we look further, it appears that when you have wear your clothes for longer, this would be one of the items on the list of many other items. Print as little as necessary might be item number two, and then you have some other options. For example, use reusable bag. Once you understand the document structure, maybe you will assign heading two to this particular subtitle. So let's do it for this uh, too, so I can just show you what's happening. So the ideally, the document, the way it's going to be structured, you have a title for the document, then you have some executive overview, and then you have subsections in the document. And uh, the reason to use styles, there are multiple reasons. First of all, it helps you generate table of content later. And also, if you're dealing with the large document, it will help the navigation. Let me demonstrate it. If you go to View tab and go to Navigation pane, now you see the two items that we've added. First one for how to protect uh, the environment, what can I do, shows up as the main document. And then there's a nested structure here. And you can click on them and navigate. And last but not least way of uh, formatting the document that I'd like to demonstrate right now. Let me turn off navigation pane so it's not confusing. And we will go back to the home tab on the ribbon. We can define a style. For example, if we highlight this uh, word, maybe make it bold, italic at the same time. And then we'll change the background as well. So now we can capture this style uh, using what's called Format Painter. For example, if I select this section, click Format Painter, now it allows me to assign it to maybe uh, another part of the document. And you see that it automatically took all the styles that I apply, and it could be more than I did, could be a combination of a lot of different things, and it reapplied it to this word uh, in the text document. Sometimes you may need to insert 3D model into Microsoft Word. This is a new functionality introduced in Office 2019, and it's applicable to all Office products. To do that, you click the Insert button, 
And uh, here you have two options for 3D models. First option is insert from the file. And Word supports multiple file extensions. For example, film box format, object format, and a lot of other formats you can kind of go down the list. I don't have any files to demonstrate to you, but you can download and try. But what you also have, even without having the files, you can insert 3D model from online sources. And there are different choices to have. For example, if you want to insert space object, you can search for space. And here there are a lot of choices of cool objects that you can insert. For example, let's pick a space shuttle. Word imports the object and uh, the cool thing is you can drag it around as a picture. It's already animated as a quick video and you can see that it can rotate and uh, have some moving parts. But on top of that, you can also, using this 3D interface, quickly move this object uh, such way that it would be best representing what you're trying to show in Microsoft Word document. A couple other valuable points related to 3D models in Word. It's uh, introduced in Office 2019, and like I mentioned already, it's applicable to all Office products, including PowerPoint, including Excel, including all other uh, non-standard uh, products in the Microsoft Office that charge additional fee, not included in the main Office subscription. It could be moved and resized like images. Uh, for example, uh, you can make it smaller, you can rotate it using a 3D interface, and you can make it play uh, using animation interface. And obviously, it could be rotated along different uh, axes, and you can position it such a way that it best represents what you're trying to demonstrate. Sometimes you may need to embed PDF file into Microsoft Word as an object. To do that, you need to navigate to Insert tab, select the Object feature, and pick the object. Once here in the Object dialog, there are different types of objects that you can embed in Adobe Acrobat document, which is a PDF file representation. And definition is the first one on the list. Typically, when you embed something, you would want to display it as an icon. But if you want to display it as a file, or through some other mechanism, you don't have to check this uh, checkbox. And you can also change icon here. Right now it represents Adobe Acrobat Documents icon, but you can pick different icon depending what your needs are. You click OK, and you see here on the list I have multiple PDF files. I know which file I would like to embed, so I'm going to double click on this file. And you see that the file was embedded and also opened in the PDF uh, viewer. But uh, going back to our Word document, this is the file that I embedded into Word document. You can treat this file as an object, so which means if I select it, I have different options available for this object. For example, I can uh, open it in uh, Adobe Acrobat to preview. I'm going to close it uh, in Adobe PDF viewer. I can also convert it and embed it inside the Word document. I'm going to cancel out from this option. And you can also delete this object. You just need to select it. And then what you do, you click either cut or you can just hit the delete button on your keyboard. Keep in mind that Microsoft Word supports different functionality. For example, Word allows you to open PDF file for editing. To do that, you go file, open menu, and one of the choices would be PDF file. And second option, this is what we were looking at, is how to embed PDF file inside Word as an attachment so you can send Word file with PDF file attached. So you need to clearly understand and know what exactly you're trying to do and decide based on your goals and objectives which path you would want to choose to deal with PDF files. Sometimes you may need to change margins for printing in Microsoft Word. To do that, you need to navigate to the Layout tab, and the first item here on the list is Margins. Margins define how far from the text to the edge of the document, to the edge of the page, what kind of spaces you have. And it defines from the top to the edge of the page, from the right, from the bottom, from the left, and it has these values. By default, the normal margin is one inch on all sides. How do you check it? You can go to File, and then it shows Print Preview. If you click the Print option, and if I make this page larger, we will see just for one page. I'm going to fit it into the screen here by using this button. So what you see is there is one inch on the top, one inch on the right, one inch on the bottom, and on the left. So this is a default margin called normal margins. Now let's go back and look at other margin choices that you have. 
Sometimes you may need to print in the narrow margins, which will be half the inch, for example. This is a good default choice if you're trying to fit as much as you can into the paper. Maybe you print as a draft, you need to print, but you know that you're not going to send it to anybody. So that's a good choice. And you can preview it here as well. You see that margins changed here right on the screen and now we have half inch. It will look exactly the same when you go and do print preview. If you go down the list, there are different types of margins. I'm not going to go through all of them. A couple important points here. You can do custom margins, so you don't have to follow and you can just define what type of margins you would use. And if you're interested in compatibility, it used to be in Office 2003, the margins were even bigger. Uh, left and right were inch uh, and a quarter instead of just one inch as they are today. Let's go ahead and look at the question that is very frequently used to assess your knowledge of Microsoft Word. How do you track changes in Word? Sometimes you may need to track changes in Microsoft Word. First, let's look at why do you want to track changes. There are a couple considerations I listed here, so let's start with the first one. The best use case scenario I find for myself. Sometimes when I work on large documents and I'm not sure about the changes I'm making, it might be useful to track them even for my own documents, even without working with other people. It's also useful for documents that's created over a long period of time. For example, maybe you're writing an ebook uh, or just a book, a printed book, and you want to come back to the changes. Maybe you have some ideas and then you want to start them as a change so you can come back to the version 1 instead of version 1.1. Maybe you insert something and then you're not sure, uh, maybe I'm not going to be doing those changes. So that's a good way to uh, track the changes just for yourself. Another big use case is when you collaborate on changes with other people. For example, if you're trying to reconcile changes between multiple groups of people, could be you and your editor, could be you and a group of people, or could be you and some uh, people that help you in the creation of this document. It used to be that to do that, you can just send the document as an attachment with the track changes on and then reconcile changes back. Now there is a better option, so track changes is still useful, but not as much. When you use Word Online document, you can uh, post it online and send everybody a link, and people will be contributing to the Word Online version. Keep in mind that Word Online also allows tracking of the changes in the document. Before we jump and start using track changes, I want to make sure that I'll be demonstrating it in a desktop version of Microsoft Word. So to start using track changes, you want to understand what kind of changes do you want to track and then turn them on. That's the first step. To do that, navigate to the Review tab. This is where I am right now. And then click on the Tracking Options. And here you see what do you want to track exactly. Comments, ink, uh, insertion and deletion, and kind of shows you different options of what you can track. You can also change username. So I will be editing changes under my name, but you can also add additional names and, and change how you would be presented in this document for the purposes of tracking changes. So I'm going to click cancel out of this box. And then first step, as I mentioned already, is to start tracking changes. To do that, you click on the track changes option and click track changes. So let's say that I'd like to add a text. And now you see when I added a text, uh, it shows this uh, text as a highlighted. And if I hover, it shows me that uh, I was the editor of this text. It shows when I inserted the changes, what date and what time the changes have been added. For the purposes of demonstration, I opened the same exact document as another user. For example, you have multiple accounts in Windows. I created another account called Video Recording and launched Word in this account. So this way we can see how would another user would see those changes. For example, if you're tracking changes and you come to this document, you see that the track changes is on by default. And the change we just made right now is presented with a red line. It means that changes have been made. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make changes as this user and then come back as original user one that I started my demonstration so you can see how changes are highlighted. For example, maybe I would like to make some changes here. Maybe it's not a question mark. Maybe I will just put a dot here. If you would like to show the actual changes, then you can click on this red line and it shows and you can switch in different modes. For example, it will show what happened and you can also switch to the final version, how final version looks like. You just need to click on this red line and you swap between the different modes. You can also switch how you do it on the ribbon. To do it, you 
switch between simple markup, all markup, shows the actual changes, then you can see no markup. This would be just a regular text that you're reading. Or you can show the original before we started tracking changes. I'm going to switch back to the simple markup and I'm going to make a couple changes. For example, I don't like this sentence. I'm an editor. I'm going to select this and then I'm going to click delete button on my keyboard. Right? You see that the change was highlighted, but I don't see it. If I want to see it, then I should go to all markup and then it, uh, you see the line crossing over this text. I'm also going to insert some text. For example, I added the text, can you wash your clothes at lower temperatures? This kind of mimics the other question marks and uh, other text blocks here in the text. So that's why I added this bullet number three as a text. And now I'm going to save this document and we'll go back and open it as a user one to see what do you actually see and what can you do uh, by tracking changes. Now we're back to the user one editing and then let's look how document looks like after user two made changes. We can see changes from user one in red and we can see changes from user two in blue. Word clearly identifies what kind of changes have been done. For example, if something was deleted, it crosses over the change. And if something was added, it just shows something in addition in a different color. Now let's look at the power of uh, tracking changes here in Microsoft Word. If we go back to review tab, what we can do now, we can accept or reject changes. So there is a buttons here, accept changes. And for example, if we click on accept, here you can accept and move next accept all changes if you're happy and then accept all changes and stop tracking so let's just do accept one by one all the changes once we do that word offers us opportunity to see each change for example when i am uh, highlighting the change it shows my name and it shows that i have inserted this change and it shows date and time now let's say I'm just reviewing the change. I can click, I just want to go next. And this is my next change that's shown. And it shows who did this video recording shows date and time, right? Let's go to the next change. And the next change, uh, it shows that this text was deleted by video recording. That's my other user uh, account on the same computer. And then let's go uh, here. And this is the last change here. We can accept changes one by one, we can reject changes, or we can accept all changes at the same time. I'm going to accept them all and stop tracking changes. And you see this is my final document, this is how it looks like. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly recap the purpose of the tracking changes. So remember, this is where we started. You can track changes for yourself, you can track changes and collaborate with others, and you can use even cooler way of doing it, uh, which is much faster. You do not have to send document back and forth as an attachment because uh, there is a risk that you might have a different version. You would have to then have a versioning on the document and typically it's a uh, pretty cumbersome. Word Online allows you to keep all the data in one place, keep track of changes and consolidate changes using very similar functionality and very similar user interface. Even though typically Word Online has fewer features than the desktop version. Thanks for watching. Hope you've learned something. And if this video made you smile, it means I did something right. I wanted to share with you that I've been unemployed myself many times in my career and know how stressful it is to look for a job. One of the most helpful things for me was maintaining positive outlook on things. I wanted to give you a boost of energy in your journey of job search and getting ready for the interview and assessment test. If you like this content, please give this video a thumbs up share with your friends and consider subscribing to this channel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in my next video.